live from the westernunion.com VIP lounge. All right, we are back in the westernunion.com VIP lounge with Ingrid Michaelson. How about a hand for our Let's girl hear right here? Let's hear it. Dude. Just did an amazing show. The number of people that cut school and ditched out of work to come see this, we can't show faces on camera right now. <laughs> Oh, they yes. admitted it though. Yeah. Dude, the Bay loves you. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. A girl in the front row got so excited she threw her phone. You can grab it. You're afraid. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Check the screen. That's so funny. When you see someone drop their phone in front of you, the first thing, you know, you feel that panic. Uh -huh. When it goes face down, oh no, oh no. And they grab it and they look at it. And usually they're like, oh. but you know, every once in a while you see a stranger and they're like, no. End of the world. Oh. End of the world. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, hi. Hi. It's cute though. Your fans get excited, and you are very expressive too. Because we were watching your videos online. I know your album just came out, which is super exciting. Yes. It's called "It Doesn't Need to Make Sense." Have to make sense. Oh, it doesn't have to make sense. Yes. Now, did that come from something specifically? Yeah. Can I get real for a second? Get yeah, very real. I'm gonna nutshell this. Um, I had a lot of uh, a lot of traumatic things happened to me. Um, I lost my mother about two years ago, um, actually on August 30th, two years ago, and I went through a divorce and I just was very much at the depths of, of despair and sure. sort of trying to figure out what is going on, why are these things happening to me, all the while making this record, which was actually kind of helped me to heal, was, was to, to write music. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to, trying to define why, why is this happening to me, you know? And then I kind of realized about a year ago, it was halfway through this whole process, um, that if I stop trying to define everything and stop trying to make sense of everything, that life was just more enjoyable. And so I kind of was like, it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. I would tell myself, like, just stop trying to make sense of everything. So I had this little mantra that I had going already. Then, when I was trying to sequence the record, I have songs that are, uh, this record really celebrates the human, the range of emotions that we can have as, as humans. So it's like very low, very sad. Like one of the saddest songs I've ever written is on this record. Right. And then there's some really joyous, happy, celebratory ones. And um, I really wanted to, to, to celebrate that range of emotions that we can have as humans. But that makes for sequencing a record really hard because I can't put that happy song after that sad song after. Mm. And then I said, you know what? Does it have to make sense? Full circle. Full and like circle. A, an actual light bulb manifested above my head. <laughs> and I thought, I'm just going to name the record that. And then I can basically do anything that I want because it doesn't have to make sense. And mm. so that just kind of How liberating. Freed it all me. works out. Yeah. It's funny because I kind of went through a very similar thing. I also got divorced. And, and anyone will tell you, and you just said it, like it's the lowest of low points. Not to bring the room down, but yeah. it's the most emotional thing I've ever went it's through. It's pretty bad. And I tell people, if you're going to get married, be like really, 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 <laughs> re I don't ever want to do this again. And literally, I went from like sleeping in my car because I didn't want to go inside to like, I won't even get into it. But uh, fast forward a year. I got my wife, I, we had a daughter, we have a house at the beach. Like I stand on my balcony and I go, wow. It's like a different life. I really came back. Was there a moment when all this happened where you're like, I'm back, like I've, I'm back? Well, I'll tell you, um, the, when you lose someone that's so close to you and you go through these huge relationship changes. Sure. For me, I think I have, I definitely have most of my time now, I think I'm back. But I have moments mm -hmm. where I'm just, you know, I'm gonna mourn again. And I'm gonna miss that, and I'm gonna be sad. And and I like to, I really like dig into my emotions. Like I don't hold back if I'm happy. I don't hold back if I'm sad. You know, if I'm hungry, you better watch out. <laughs> I just really like. I, the older I get, the more I'm not gonna kowtow to what I think I should be. I'm just gonna be what I am and feel what I feel. So I think most of the time I feel like, yeah, I got this, but. You know, I can't fight the blues I'm like sure. anybody else. So yeah, I think it's a, a good balance though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it that's called being a human. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> See, it gets me out of everything. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, and singing and, and being in front of people like this, it, it, that helps me, that feeds me and makes, you know, I, I don't have children. So I think my music is like my, my kids and mm -hmm. it kind of helps me to feel like I'm doing something, I'm doing something worthwhile that really touches people. And that to me, you know, being off the road is hard because you don't have that connection. connection. So then the past few months doing promo and doing a few shows, it's kind of been like, oh, right. This is why I do this. This is awesome. So it's been, it's been very healing And then you hear me. people sing along with your songs. You're like, oh my gosh, it is reaching them. This yeah. is good. 
especially the new ones, the ones that are just out and, I, and people are putting covers on YouTube and it just, I'm like, oh, those are my like brand new babies and people already know all the words and it's it's really encouraging. And I saw a cute video of you uh, looking at your new album in Target. Oh yeah. It was just, cause you're so, it's it's your baby. Like to see it there, even though you've had what, five, we think, yeah. five albums? <laughs> Five-ish, five-ish albums. Yeah, it's a confusing story. Um, yeah, I what, I still get a, get very a tickled when yeah. I see my saw my record in in Target or Best Buy or wherever. You know, I'm like, oh my god, that's me, you guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, and like the you know one one ninety nine bin. I'm like, I don't care. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. Now, girly question: If you ever go shopping, like Target is my store where I can't not. Yeah. I have to spend everything I have. I charge. I can't. Target is bad because you go in for a bath mat and you end up leaving with like, you know, $560 and a Target card that you signed up for. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. And then Starbucks because why not? You're there. You're already there. And then why not go next door to Bed Bath & Beyond? <laughs> you know, it's really bad. Um, yeah, Target is bad. But it's good. It's a good it's bad. It's so good. Anyone naughty. else? It's a naughty, it's a naughty shop. <laughs> it's a naughty shop. <laughs> like, I really will go in for like three things and end up just buying, you know, a shag rug. Oh, and they like, know. I didn't even need this. They no. Know. It gives me a complex. I'm like, my house sucks right now. Yeah. I need, I need more cups with roosters on them. I'm like, no, you don't. No, I do. You know, they're so cute. Anyway, yes, Target. I saw if you're a couple, watching. Right? Over here, Target. I'll take a $50 gift card any day. <laughs> 50. I saw a couple of tweets, and, and you know this, you're like an OG singer-songwriter now. I know it feels like the blink of an eye, but, uh. but you've been making music for a while, uh, and I feel like we've been with you every step of the way. I saw a couple of tweets from like Christina Perry and uh, Rachel Platten, and they're all giving you shout-outs. You, is there a favorite, or are they all kind of like, you guys all friends? Or are they like your kids? or like? How <laughs> we have like slumber parties I mean <laughs> and pray each other's hair. Um, I would say out of that kind of like group of people, well, I've known Rachel for a long time. Sure. She she has a lot of, we have a lot of mutual friends in common, and she's around my age, and she kind of, you know, has been doing this for so long, and then had this breakout song. It's been amazing to watch that. Right. Christina, I've met a couple times, and we we just share a love of Christmas, like an obsession for Christmas. And and so I'll, when I start watching Christmas movies, which is in September, sometimes the end of August, I'll like I, I texted her this year. I was like, I'm watching Krampus, you know, <laughs> and she was really excited for me. But I think if I was to say like who's my buddy of all that, Sarah Bareilles, I, you know, oh, yeah. I've I've known her for a long time, and she's just we're born one day apart. When I watch her uh, on stage, I'm like, that's like me, except she sings better. But she's so awesome and funny, and awesome and funny like me, um, <laughs> and just really sweet, and, and, and I really, really like her. She's such a good person. I, Rachel and Christina are also awesome. I just don't know them as well. Right. We love your tweets are so fun. Like the, the one that Thank I Thank you. Oh, can I we get into to, the tweets? Yeah. yeah, the one I remember that I was like, "Oh my god, she totally gets me." Uh, you were at the gym and you said, "Don't you think it's a little rude that the uh, the treadmill asks you your weight and your age?" Your age. Yeah. I, I lie. We've got it up I'm on like the screen, 32, don't we? 32, 123. I lie about like, my age on the or, I lie and my all weight. The time. I'm like, "You know what? It's not a man. I it's really not the don't, DMV." You're not going to tell me like like the difference in calories is not going to be that astounding. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like personal just throw in your age it and your really weight is. out there. Yeah, because yeah. who's looking? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even want to look at it. I know, it's me mine. neither. I'm like, just go, 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 go. <laughs> Skip past it. I don't want to deal with it. Before Cause I get know, because you know the age like comes up, it's like thirty five, and I remember being like down, 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 down. down. Right, thirty five is so right. old. Twenty five, yeah, and now I'm like, I'll never be that age, <laughs> and now I'm like one up. <laughs> Me too. That's what I say about forty three every single day. <laughs> oh, I'll man. never get there, but next year. Um, before I get into my favorite tweet, we were doing a game this morning called "When Was Your First? Meaning, uh, having debate on when when a kid should have their first cell phone, when a kid should have their first kiss when a kid should have their first date. So let's talk about first kiss. When did you have your first kiss? And where was it? Um, it was at Erin Kelly's party in her backyard. It was with a boy named Jimmy Clark. I sing about this on Celebrate. He really is my first kiss. Um, I sing, a, so, so possibly my next single, according to, what's your name? Laurie. The, the bridge says in the basement after dark, truth or dare with Jimmy Clark. So that's... Oh. A bit of poetic license because it was in the backyard, not the basement, and it wasn't truth or dare. I had been given a list of boys and asked if I wanted to go with them. In Staten Island, where I grew up in Staten Island, New York, go with meant French kiss. I was 13 at the time. Everybody had been kissing everybody, but I was very afraid of it. 
I would leave parties if they started playing Spin the Bottle. I was like, oh, I got to go, guys. I got this thing in the morning. <laughs> and I remember checking like, no, 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 no. And then Jimmy Clark. And I was like, I wrote, made my own box for maybe. And oh, I my God. Check, how cute. Maybe. Because I don't want to look like such a prude. But no, 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 no. Maybe. So then at Aaron's party, they're like, Jimmy's outside is waiting for you. And I was like, oh, my God. Of course it was like is. a business transaction. So I was like, okay, all right. I think I was wearing like cut off shorts and like a, like, but not like cute, like cut off, like, 90s was bad for girls. They were like baggy and like mid thigh, like hit at the perfect horrible, like you know, like a big flannel. I think it was like a pajama shirt. But I went out there and he was waiting for me and he like pulled his hat around. I was like, oh no. Yeah, he's coming in for the kill. And then we, we, I guess we kissed. If you consider two tongues just going like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then we talked for like a minute. And then he went back in and I said, what, you want more? <laughs> and he thought that was really funny and told everybody. And then everybody knew that I said, what, you want more? And it, again, this, <laughs> like, so unromantic, like, uh, da, 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 done. And then I went back inside and I was like, cool, because I had gone with Jimmy Clark, you know. And that then is. I remember the first time I really kissed somebody, which was like a year later. I was like, this guy's opening and closing his mouth. Like, he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> so let's just revolve your tongue around the other person's tongue for 25 seconds and then stop. Um, so I was 13. I think 13 is a good age. It felt yeah. right for me. I agree. I was 13, too. Yeah. I liked your story, Sandy. I was 11, and my boyfriend, which we only kissed, but he ate my face. He ate it. I mean, oh, I've had there was that. no breathing. We didn't know how to breathe or stop or any of the moves so i it just was this I, I don't know do you remember <laughs> kissing boys for so long and they had little beards and you would end up with like oh this yeah red, like it looked like you were eating pasta sauce i had a, a horrible one time horrible what's the point of that i don't know we're, get in get out be done with we it we didn't know at the time it would no. hurt keep going don't kids don't even do it don't ever even <laughs> do this, it. Don't this kiss one question could ever. be the whole interview if you made out with your wife right now she would get oh my god right so bad oh she won't even let me get close it I'll, hurts i'll, I'll just try to get a little hug and I get this mm. yeah mm. no and Either she makes the baby do it too it I know I know I gotta this get middle super, stuff super good. clean shaven <laughs> uh, what was the other question I'll put like had? a oh. mask on that'd be really <laughs> weird yeah, super sexy I don't want to yeah. bring up my a CPAP mask right mask. now Hello. I actually own one of those thanks oh yeah, yeah um, uh, first date when should kids have their first date um I think they're like <sighs> Like around that. I mean, what does a date mean? That's what I said today. I was like, well, like if it means drive. like going to the movies right. and like holding hands and getting penny candy, like <laughs> thirteen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fourteen. Yeah. If there's like you know other things involved a little later, but I don't know. I don't know. No, my boyfriend's got a fifteen-year-old and a seventeen-year-old, so oh, we're really? dealing with all of wow. this stuff like in real time. Yeah, so that's it's kind of cray cray. Do you Boys. see any of yourself in the in? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Totally. I'm like, you're lying, and I know it. I feel like I'm still 16, so I'm like, please. I won't tell them, though. Like, I'm like that person, and then I end up telling them anyway. But, yeah, it's, it's, but it's really kind of intense to see teenagers, and they're just, like, they got, they had, yeah. They got the rage. They got rage. I know. Yeah. And we recognize it, because we were there, But I too. get it. <laughs> I totally get it. I'm like, I totally get your rage. Yeah. We did a story uh, today. We talked about a girl who she was angry at her ex-boyfriend, so she set his car on fire, but it was the wrong car. Oh, so she wow. didn't realize it was just the wrong car. And I, I wanted to laugh, but I was like, I could be that girl, too. That's like, a little too much I rage. wouldn't, but I know it's in there if I wanted to. One time this guy, he, he took my spot. Now in New York City, when you circle around for 20 minutes, you know, maybe even upwards of an hour, and you see the perfect spot, and you go to pull in, and someone comes in behind you, Oof. and does that move where they're not even, because you have to back into a spot. Right. So anyway, this guy did that to me, I was furious, and I wrote this whole story about it, and I like circled around again, and I wrote this note, and it was like, karma is a B with an itch, I said, <laughs> but I said the real word, and I said, something bad is gonna happen to you now. <laughs> and I folded it up and I walked, I don't know where I parked, but I like, was walking back to the car, so mad, so mad, I was gonna put it on. And then I kind of forgot which one it was. <laughs> I was like, what if I put it on this car? It's like an car. old lady like feeding birds and like she gets back and it's like something bad is gonna happen. <laughs> so I ended up just taking it home with me and I didn't put it on the car, which I think this girl probably would have benefited from not taking her rage out on a car. But I feel, I know that rage. You might have rage. saved a life that day though. Just have a little. Yeah. 
I feel like you can have the rage, but then, you know, be, be mindful about it. <laughs> I did the exact same thing down the street from the Fillmore, ironically, where Ingrid's going to be note? playing. <laughs> no. Um, oh, wait, guy, yes, the Fillmore, where uh, I'm playing on the, on the 24th, 24th, 25th, 24th and 25th of October. One of the of shows October. is sold out, I think. Yes, Ooh. that's why they have a second show that everyone should buy tickets to because you're amazing. Um, this guy pulled that same move. A lady pulled in. She way? pulled <laughs> up to back in, and the guy just swooped his car in. And I'm standing on the corner, I'm watching this, and I'm like, I don't like bullies. And so she cussed him out and drove away, and, and I yelled out without even thinking, man, I go, I hope nobody keys your car, bro. And he got out of the car, and he was gigantic. Oh, no. I think he played for the Raiders. <laughs> oh, no. And he had his girlfriend with him, and he could not get to me fast enough. <gasps> He's dragging her across the street. You could see the fire in his eyes. I'm going to die. <laughs> So I, I ran. <laughs> I was like, no, I can't. I ran into a wine shop and just pretended to look at bottles. And he comes and he goes, oh I see you, gosh. man. I see you. I hope nothing happens to my car. I know where you are. And I'm like, okay. And yeah, there was but a, it was your instinct. That's I left my... a puddle. It was horrible. Anyway. Was this and then yesterday? You keep his car. <laughs> yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but he's a jerk. Well, you know what? Karma it will come around, I believe. It will. That guy. Oh. Don't so. ever do that to people. No, you're a sweets girl, right? You like sweets? I think sweets. I've, yeah, like yes. You would love <laughs> pie, cake. Oh yeah, yeah anything yeah. like that. Sugar. I have a yeah. sugar problem. That's all right. You're in good company. Real good company. I mean, no, seriously. Like, I tried to stop eating sugar, and I get like the shakes. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm not allowed in bakeries because I'll run out to the car, and they'll be filming intervention. I love sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Chocolate, I have brownies. I bake a lot too. What about your tweet? We loved about being a vegan. Oh, I got it right here. Oh. Can we get that up on the screen? Um, the tweet: I could totally go vegan if it weren't for cheese, and butter, and yogurt, and bacon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> so for the past three weeks, I actually have been vegetarian. Oh, really? I just that's why I, I wrote that because I've been trying to go vegan, and I was like, this is too hard. The bacon thing, I actually I'm fine about. I threw that in for laughs. Right. But cheese is so hard. Mm -hmm. It is hard. What uh, about that I, cashew cheese, though? I made some. Did I write yeah? about that? I wrote about making nut cheese. No, I've actually made it. Yeah. Oh, I no, made no. made it. You know, it's delicious. It's pretty good. It's the closest thing to nachos. I was talking to about making, yeah. Um, my goal is just to eat less animal protein, but I don't think I can say, like, I'm never going to eat cheese again or right. this again. I mm -hmm. just think to make a lot less of it. But, I mean, yeah, bacon was the thing. I went. I was a vegetarian a few years ago, and bacon was the thing that brought me back into the it fold. brought you back. It crossed you back over. Because it just is so good. <laughs> What's your like go-to guilty meal? Like two in the morning, you're in New York and something's open. In, you're uh, I was going to say in and out and out Shake Shack. The Shake Shack. Were we just talking about that? Oh, Did we just open Shake one in Daily Shack City? Here. I think they I just think opened one in Daily City. talking about yeah. vegan. I mean, their burgers are so good. <laughs> but their cheese fries are so good. Okay. I mean, if you looked at my, you know, Postmates. Do you guys have Postmates? Mm, do we? Postmates is kind of like an Uber for like delivery. Food. Oh, yeah. okay. If you looked at my history, it's like all cheese fries from, <laughs> from Shake Shack. It's really embarrassing. They literally do you want to order again? I'm like, stop judging me. Yes. <laughs> I do want the same thing. They're about to open the first West Coast Shake Shack right here in Daly City, about nine minutes away from this room. Well, congratulations. In like two months. So we're, we're excited. Catching up. We we're have catching no idea. You don't have In-N-Out you... in here or you do? Oh, we do. We do. Well, okay, yeah, so we, we don't have In-N-Out in, in okay. New York. And this is like our answer to In-N-Out. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. The fries are so much better than In-N-Out fries. Oh, my God. Fries. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I'm sorry we went down this road. I'm so hungry. <laughs> well, we're excited for you because we know this new album is a big deal, It's especially with what you've been through. So, And this is the beginning of kind of your tour. You're going to be touring the next couple months? Yes, October 6th through November 22nd. Mm -hmm. We're doing 25 cities, something mm -hmm. around there. Big and old including tour. the Fillmore, two days of the Fillmore, which I love having two shows at the same venue instead of just doing a bigger venue mm -hmm. because then you get to like actually do something we're gonna go to Alcatraz. Oh, oh right. and some touristy stuff. Good. Yeah. Well, I never. I've been here so many times, and every time, I'm like, let's go to Alcatraz, and we call them. They're like, when do you want to come today? <laughs> yeah, you got to do that like two, three months in advance. In yeah. The so our tour no manager joke. already like set it up a wow. month ago. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. It's, but I'm really excited about that, and I just love being here. I love, I love having time to go around and see things because usually you just do. A show, get on the bus, you drive, you wake up, you do the show, you get on the bus, you drive. So when you have the two sure. shows mm -hmm. at a smaller venue, you get to kind of enjoy the city more. And I just love the film art. We did a bigger place last tour. I forget where it was, but... I think it was the Fox Theater, maybe? Yes. But I really... Which it was rad. I but, was totally But there's there something too. about the film that's like... Nostalgic. Yeah, and it's just like you feel like you're part of something 
like Legendary. bigger than you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we decided to do the, we put one on sale. We're like, well, if we sell it, we'll do, we're hoping we'd sell it. And then right. we sold it out pretty quickly. Nice. So Is yeah. Anybody famous or not that shows up at your shows that you hear about and it makes you nervous when you're on stage? Famous or not? Just a person. Does anybody ever Nobody show up? Nobody makes me shows? nervous. On no. Nobody? No, okay. I, I, I like knowing that they're, if there's, you know, somebody there, you know, somebody special, whether it's What's the it's biggest name you've somebody. heard that showed up at one of your shows because they're a big fan? I know Taylor Swift a couple of years ago was that probably giving is the biggest a person. <laughs> sure. Yeah, probably. She's pretty big. Yeah, she's probably the most fa famous. -est. That's cool that it doesn't affect you, though. Um, no, yeah. I don't really get nervous. I get nervous for live TV because mm -hmm. I, I always make up words and like change lyrics. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. But on stage, it doesn't matter, it goes by. But when you're live TV, you know. One time I had, I was so, so nervous that I had them do a teleprompter and I still said the words wrong. <laughs> Cause I was focusing so much on not messing up reading the teleprompter. Sure. But other than that, I, I, I mean, I like come alive on stage. I'm, a, I, I'm an introvert. I actually just read Amy Schumer's book mm -hmm. and she talks about how she's an introvert, which means you know, when when she's on stage and when she's performing, it's it's one thing, but she actually like needs to be alone, needs to have time to recharge and meditate, and and she doesn't like the small talk and chit chat and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my god, I'm exactly like that. Like when I'm on stage and in front of people, I I love it. It's like this great energy, but I also need that kind of like quiet, sort of alone time. Mm -hmm. But sure. um, but yeah, why did I even start talking about that? I don't we were, know, but we were I, talking about I was into it. Yeah, no, totally. Right. You got to recharge for yourself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, girl. I get you. Yeah, yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yeah. What's your favorite like Netflix binge right now? Do oh you? Oh my do gosh, it? we just watched The Get Down. Okay. So good. I mean, uh, let's see what else. I watch a lot of television. Um, oh, 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 The Americans. Okay. Um, I mean, Game of Thrones. All, all the good ones. Yeah. All the good ones. <laughs> Mad well, we really Men. just. Oh, Mad Men. Yeah. Well, I watch Mad Men in like real time. Stranger Things, there you go. Stranger Things, that was like digested in two days. Um, <laughs> but the get down was the lot that we just, nice. uh, my boyfriend and I just finished watching that. It's really good. And growing, and growing up in New York City, watching this piece, you know, Baz Luhrmann's, so it's very kind mm -hmm. of moody and dreamy, but really, but also has a lot of factual things in it. It's about Love the it. birth of hip hop in, um, in New York City in the 70s and it's really, really well done and really well acted and really cool. It's a lot of history of the music that people don't know about. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know a lot of it. I'm um, still stuck on Sex in the City. I know it's oh, I love Sex 20 in years the city. old. Oh, I <laughs> it's got my you. go-to. I, I watch that, the DVDs when I work out. Like I've seen every episode. You could ask me trivia. That's what we should have done. Sex in the City trivia. trivia. Oh my God, we'll have to do that as a Next side time. video. Yeah, oh, oh my god. Good idea. Good idea. You guys, who, you're all young. Do you watch Sex in the City? No, see, it's gone. Oh, it's don't going tell me that. away. Don't tell me that. The we young have to keep, it. We have to keep it here. <laughs> I feel like I'm invading know. the Yaya sisterhood over here. I'm just going <laughs> to sit over here. Pants. <laughs> Ingrid Michaelson, thank you Are so we much, man. Right. We, you know, we did get the wrap up, but you know, October 24th and 25th, she'll be yep. back at the sh uh, at uh, Fillmore. Fillmore. Thank you very much. New and album is called It Doesn't Have to Make Sense. Mm -hmm. yes. Loves it. Thank you. And we love you. Thank Thanks you, Ingrid Michaelson, everyone. Give it up, you guys. Time.